This is a drug that was in common use uh, hundreds of years ago. It was one of the most prescribed drugs in 1900. It was in the pharmacopoeia for, for physicians, so it's already been approved and studied. The fact that we now have to reapprove it through uh, the FDA, which if you put aspirin through the FDA today, it wouldn't get through, is, is, is circular thinking. I'm Kevin McKernan. I'm the CSO of Corrigin Life Sciences and Medicinal Genomics. These are two companies that um, are joined at the hip. We look at personalized medicine in patients, so we sequence patients, their genomes, to sort out uh, what types of defects they may have or mutations in their genome that can be properly treated. And at the same time, we're also focusing on uh, medical cannabis safety, and so we look at the genetics of the plants to try and help, uh, help bring some more uh, trust and security in that field. extremely grateful to have as our keynote speaker and our scientific anchor and visionary for this conference, Dr. Rafael Machulam. I was surprised, very surprised to find out that while we knew quite a lot about morphine, which had been isolated from uh, opium uh, many, many decades previously, and the same was true for uh, cocaine, the chemistry of cannabis was not uh, uh, well known. There was absolutely no interest whatsoever. Nowadays, it seems that uh, actually interest is uh, going on more on cannabidiol because of its uh, therapeutic activities and not being toxic and not being psychoactive. It can be administered to patients at huge uh, amounts without any side effects. The endocannabinoid system is an extremely important one. And as a matter of fact, people from NIH mentioned that it's involved in essentially all human diseases. Very, very strong statement. Our group showed two AG works against brain damage. So we have seen three or four of these compounds working against brain damage. Others have found that CBD does that in mice. But we have seen no work in humans When science gets politicized, rational discourse disappears. And I feel like that really has happened in this field. We're not addressing this in a rational, thoughtful way, and, but we can. Hundreds of thousands of patients are already using cannabis to treat symptoms, but it's really important to study it in um, a controlled setting because we need to understand what the potential risks are of cannabis use in specific patient populations, and we need to understand how the drug interacts with other drugs the patient might be on. Tilray is one of the only companies in the world capable of producing GMP-grade cannabis and cannabis-derived medications. This is possible because Tilray is located in Canada where federal regulations allow the production of cannabis and also cannabis extracts that can be used in clinical research around the world. And so what we want to do is produce scientifically sound, methodologically sound research that will hopefully change policy and also provide mainstream physicians with the tools they need in order to treat patients with cannabis-derived extracts. My daily living was uh, my hands shaking so severe I couldn't stop it. I had suicidal thoughts constantly rage to no end. The only reason I'm here today and being able to do this is because of cannabis. There is, thank you. A year ago today, I stopped taking all those pills and strictly using cannabis. I have not had uh, a moment of thought to suicide or the depression that I was constantly under. If an individual decides to do what you're doing and is being helped, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the physician or the physicians will not do that. I'm personally trying to uh, vie for cl clinical trials in, in football players and that we have this brain disease that leads to Alzheimer's and dementia and all of these horrific things. And we wanted to find out whether the cannabinoid system affects positively, we hope, the damage done by concussion. We found 
that we could reduce by 50% the damage that was done. So here we have strong data showing that a cannabis type compound helps. Mm -hmm. At the moment, these compounds have never, never been given to a human. Right. Not only for concussion, for anything. This rage thing that comes along with this brain disease is very scary. And when I found certain strains of cannabis, I didn't have those feelings anymore. And being in Tennessee where I was at, it was uh, difficult to get strains. So it's like, hey, what, what do you got this week? We've been trying to put an end to that by sequencing all the strains and making a huge catalog of every strain so you can actually genetically fingerprint and know, all right, did it change on me? And I'm just curious your experience on this. Did when I got to California, uh, I knew, okay, I'm gonna go get my card. Let me go down and try, start trying these strains because I knew there was something with it. We're still in really early days tying genotypes of plants to patients, but mm -hmm. we're slowly building this database of variants that we know predict some level of response to CBD, and eventually it's going to go there. Do you think you've been on uh, using THC or CBD long enough to get a sense of long-term effects on uh, for, for cannabis? Oh yeah, and I don't take wow. leave aspirin or Vicodin or anything anymore. People say, marijuana is a gateway drug. I said, you know what a gateway drug is? Football. Football. Yeah. It's Football's a gateway to six or eight drugs. Yeah. The most exciting research we've seen in addiction medicine is in, in CBD reducing those dopaminergic uh, addictive desires. And it's one of the most promising drugs for ending addiction that we've seen. Yeah, hemp is probably the first agricultural plant that we ever domesticated. Right around 1937, we ripped that from our diet and added antibiotics. We have caffeine given to kids and orange soda in school, and you're not as parents are never even told about it. Many of these kids are on Ritalin, methylphenidate. Okay, what does that do to their brain? Uh, and so there's a host of things that we've somehow said, well, we're not going to worry about what that does in the developing mind, but we're going to apply that, that, that scrutiny to THC. There's, there's, there's no logic to that. And when you see children with epilepsy getting it and they're coming alive, like, well, what's this third rail about pediatrics all about? So uh, I have a son with severe epilepsy who's untreated. And it's a really severe disease. He was really suffering and I met a dad at an epilepsy conference who told me that marijuana was helping his son who had severe epilepsy. I looked up whether marijuana had any compounds that might be anti-convulsive and I found some literature uh, from the 70s and 80s showing that in fact CBD is pretty consistently anti-convulsive. 35 years ago we administered cannabidiol to epileptic patients and we found that those uh, eight patients that got the material four of them didn't have epileptic attacks during the period that we gave them cannabidiol three had much less and one was not affected so what we yeah. want to do is make sure that everyone has access right now in whatever way they can but at the same time do the rigorous research that's required and so what i want to figure out is how we can move the needle very quickly on policy while also collecting the clinical data. We need clinical trials and unfortunately, until recently, there were very few clinical trials. Policy, I think, um, has really interfered with the progress of science. Uh, the legal part has to do something with it. The stigma has something to do with it. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. <laughs> kids that we have here that they're severe epilepsy, they look, in, uh, on a lot of these other pharmaceutical drugs, they look as if they're complete zombies and you put them on CBD and suddenly they're now awake and conscious and they're having conversations with their parents. Are they high? I don't think they're high. I think you're just restoring the neurotransmitter imbalance that's going on. There is enough data already published which shows that yes, it lowers the number of epileptic attacks. We did that 35 years ago in adult patients. Very little has been done since. My son has been living with this disease for seven years, and I still talk to senators who say we have to be careful, we have to go slowly, and I don't think we can expect patients to wait for years for a medication that's already available to them. There's this thing called sudden unexplained death with epilepsy, that they just die, bang, they're gone if you don't have these things under control. And so it's one of those scenarios where um, you just gotta do the right thing. So my goal now at Chilray is to make sure that we develop these cannabis-derived treatments as quickly as possible. It's been black market for so long that we don't have a good way to track this. And so that's what we're trying to do here is to change that, is to genetically sequence all of these strains and then tie those down to the cannabinoids and terpenes that they make and track that throughout time. 
If you don't have that information and you start going down the epilepsy route without it, you're gonna go through all types of surgery and invasive procedures or go through 20 different drugs before they figure this out. Having the information in advance sidesteps all of that and gets you on the right drug instantly. The debate should no longer be about whether to provide an access, right? The debate should now be about how to provide an access. And I think I, we can do that collectively by mainstreaming this medicine. We were the really lucky ones. There are 200,000 kids out there who still don't have access to pure cannabidiol. You can no longer allow uh, a medicine that has been proven to protect our brains to be kept from us any longer. A special thank you to our sponsors, Tilray and Weedmax for supporting the conference here. We can tie more science around the plant so people don't just write it off as a, you know, a hippie stream. It's something that's actually been studied. We understand the plant better than any plant in the world and then we'll start to consider maybe those, how do we synthesize those in the plant and get them into compounds we trust in people.